All right, now that we've got the camshafts out, put the new camshafts in the support plate. I can show you that you need to have the alignment marks lined up when you put the new cams in. You have the chain on and then the hydraulic adjuster is back in place. So this is what they call the cam support plate. Camshafts are in place and we're going to put the oil pump back in and then we're going to slide the camshafts in and we can do our reassembly. We've got the oil pump bagged up. Take the rag out here. And this is the Screaming Eagle oil pump. What you want to make sure is that the O-ring is the correct O-ring. Goes inside the case down at the bottom. It fits right on there. This is the thicker O-ring. You put the wrong one in. The return oil will not function correctly and you'll have issues later. All right, so you can see inside the cam chest there, that yellow greenish O-ring is in place. That's the larger, thicker O-ring where your oil pump will actually slide into. And there's two uh, oil seals on the outside as well. So I just wanted you to note that that inside O-ring is critical. Make sure you get it back in place and make sure you get the correct one in there. The needle bearings in here are the upgraded full complement bearing one on each side for the front and rear camshafts and I'm going to slide the oil pump in place you can look over my shoulder and watch me do that and there's a uh, flat sides on each side of the Drive it, driven gear, so we're going to slide that in there, wiggle it, and it'll get centered up. And then the flat plate, you can see that the tab, one side is larger than the other. Make sure it goes in the right spot. Put the plate in. And there's a wavy spring washer. Another plate, one tab is larger than the other. And our oil pump gear. And then again the flat sides to engage, to drive the pump. That puts the oil pump in place. And now we can slide our camshaft support plate with cams in. These cams have already been run. I like to use molybdenum as an assembly lube. It mixes completely with the oil and because there's already engine oil present in there it will mix together does a real nice job of protecting the parts on initial startup although these ones have already broken in again because they are used so we're going to line this up slide everything together and put it in place now I'm going to go ahead and put all the bolts in around the outside loosely put the oil pump bolts in and we're going to roll over the motor so that the oil pump has a chance to kind of center itself. Procedures are outlined in the service manual as well. It is recommended just so that the four bolts that actually go into the oil pump 
Um, everything can kind of align itself before you tighten it down to, to the proper torque spec. All right, so just like the service manual says, we're going to loosely install the cam support bolts with a drop of blue Loctite on there. We're getting all these in place. We're going to snug them down, torque them to 95 inch pounds. I've already got the oil pump bolts loosely installed just for the sake of video speed things up a little bit so I'm just running these in they're not tight when I do go to torque them to spec there is an actual uh, pattern a sequence that you'll tighten them in and you'll see that momentarily so I've got all those loosely in place I've got my direct reading snap on torque wrench which will actually point to zero when I've hit my 95 inch pounds it's a little bit of an older way it's accurate it's been uh, calibrated so there's no issue so they're saying this is the number one Five inch pounds we're gonna come across here this is number two nice 95 up over here for number three down for number four number five finally number six and I like to go around once more to make sure everything may seem redundant, but that's a peace of mind to me. So that's the third one. Four. Five. And six. So I know that they're all torque to spec. And with regards to the oil pump, Mounting bolts, drop a blue Loctite, it's already on there, I haven't tightened them up, and there is this sequences on there, one, two, three, and four. Tighten them up until they bottom out. And back them out a quarter of a turn. And then tighten them up as we turn the engine over. I've got the transmission in high gear and I'm using the rear wheel with the spark plugs out of the cylinders to turn, the, turn it over. You can see the pinion shaft is moving there. And we're gonna go one. Two. And three. And four, so that was alternately tightening them, keep us from binding, and I'll just hit the final 95 inch pounds. Go around once more for good measure. So now we've got the cam support plate torqued in and the oil pump bolts are torqued in. Next procedure will be to line up the pinion shaft with the rear cylinder camshaft timing mark. Install the outer drive chain, put the tensioner back in, and then put the cover on. I'll show you that next. Okay, so now we're about to put the... the uh, 
drive gear or the chain in and what you're gonna see I want to show you here is that you've got the cam alignment marks but what we're doing is putting the drive gear on and the chain is you'll notice on the rear camshaft there is a larger spline that's an index for the gear that's going to slide on there and the pinion shaft there's a flat that engages with the with the drive gear and I'll show you that but this line here is important it indicates the alignment so I'm going to show you how I get it on the bench now I've got the chain on you can sort of see up in there the wider opening on the in the splines that's going to engage with the rear camshaft the two marks I'm going to try and pick this up and move it over here holding a camera So you'll see the flat, get that engaged properly on the pinion, and we'll slide everything in place, tighten up the bolts. Okay, so you can see the line inside there on the support plate and then the the dots on each the pinion shaft gear the driving gear to the rear camshaft and then the chain inside is what drives the front camshaft so all of our timing marks are lined up we've got it in place I'm going to put the primary chain tensioner in here then I'm going to put the gasket on and the cam cover move on to the next step all right we're going to install the pinion shaft nut they say a little bit of red loctite a little bit of thread locker on the end this one's going to get tightened to 25 foot pounds and then the longer fine thread bolt again with some thread locker on there that's going to get torque to 34 foot-pounds so I like just to run them in with the torque uh, with my impact driver quickly just to speed it up a little bit get them in there I'm gonna use a conventional click type torque wrench get it set 25 for the bottom So maybe what you can see what I did there was you've seen the brake pedal move and because the transmission is in gear the rear wheel can be used to drive the crank I've got the spark plugs out so I can turn it over hold the brake down I was able to prevent that from turning and use the torque wrench to tighten this bolt to 25 foot-pounds now this one's going to go to 34. We can do it the same way. Hold the brake on and turn that. So I'll adjust my torque wrench up to 34 foot-pounds. Apply the brake. And there you go.
using the rear brake with the transmission and gear to prevent that from turning. See it turns over. Got it in gear. You will have to press fairly hard on the brake. Thirty-four foot-pounds on the top bolt. So we've got these torqued. Everything is done. We can roll it around. Verify our timing marks, the pinion shaft. The mark on the gear, the line behind, and the mark on the rear camshaft drive gear. Everything's fine. There is an oil hole for the hydraulic tensioner. It really can only install one way. That's a T27 Torx bit. And we'll tighten that into place. Those are quarter inch coarse. Going to do the 95 inch pounds. Back to the direct reader. Now we can go ahead and put the cam cover on and move on inst installation of our tappets, push rods rocker boxes. Now one thing I do like to do is go into the holes themselves and give them a little bit of a clean out. If you get a small enough brush, bristle brush, you can get in there. On older bikes sometimes there's a silicone build up in the bottom and it'll cause a lot of problems when you go to tighten things down. You can get a hydraulic action and it'll split it. It's not so bad on these. But you can clean out some of the oil, gives the Loctite a chance to, to bite in a little better and, and hold. So we'll get all that, a little bit of brake clean on a rag here, just cleaning up the gasket surface. Alright, so we'll install the gasket, cam cover. Got some quarter inch bolts with some Loctite already on them. Get one of those started and grab my other ones that I've got preloaded and we'll get them in. And for those of you that have watched this video to this point, thanks for tuning, tuning in and hopefully you've learned something. If you've got any questions, you can always put them in the comments or send me a direct message. More than glad to answer your answer any questions you might have so get these all kind of started in here I'm gonna grab my driver just to speed things up a little bit I'm not actually gonna tighten them I'm just gonna bottom them all out and then we're gonna go over these in sequence tightening them to the 95 inch pounds If you're installing higher lift cams, there's some things that you'd have to check possibly, but these aren't too uh, these aren't too big, so some of the other checks that you would do don't apply here necessarily. Switch back to my direct reading torque wrench. Start in a number one position, number two, number three, and 
five. Up here for six. Beside it for seven. Eight. And then finally 10. And I'm just going to go around once. So we know that we've tightened them all to the proper torque. So now that the cam cover is in place, the next step for us is going to be installation of the tappets themselves and then the tappet covers. We'll drop the new push rods in and tighten up the rocker boxes. We're putting adjustable push rods in, so we don't actually have to drop the push rods in. We don't need to drop the adjustables in from the top because they are fully adjustables. We could put the top on first and adjust them up through here. It doesn't really matter which way we do it in. So for this one, I'm just going to tighten up the, I'm gonna tighten up the uh, rocker arm carrier and then I can push the, put the tubes in and the push rods in from the, from the fully adjustable position, which I'll show you that as well.